Seoje Pil was born into a noble family on January 7, 1864. He was the second son of Seo Gwang Hyo, a local magistrate in Boseong County of Southern Jeolla. At a young age, Seoje Pil was exposed to the ideas of Western thoughts and civilization and began to hold political ideals for the country of Korea. With his determination and intelligence, Seoje Pil went on to become one of the youngest people to pass the civil service exam and was assigned junior officer at only 18 years old. On December 4, 1884, Seo helped to stage a coup against the government in order to start rapid modernization in the country. Unfortunately, the coup collapsed on the third day as the royal court was attacked by the Qing military. Seo realized that the reason the coup had failed was because of the lack of support and understanding from the public. After the incident, he and a few other leaders fled to Japan. Unlike most of the other fugitives, Seo Jae continued to move and travel to the United States. He arrived in San Francisco, California on June 11, 1885. Although Seo Jae encountered many struggles and hardships in the foreign country, through time he came to set many accomplishments. In June 1888, Seo Jae became the first Korean to become a U.S. citizen. Years later, in 1893, he became a doctor, becoming the first Asian American to receive a medical degree. Furthermore, on July 20, 1894, Seo Jae-pil got married to Muriel Armstrong and became the first ever Korean-American marriage recorded in the U.S. Around the time Seo Jae-pil got married, Joseon became full with the desire for political reform. The king of Joseon realized that the reform was becoming crucial. He created a new cabinet consisting of the former reform members, Seo Jae-pil being one of them. When Seo Jae-pil returned to Joseon, he believed his only hope for reformation was to enlighten the public. He and a group of high-ranking officials created a newspaper called The Independent, which was made as an easy way to spread information about the country to the people. He began to come up with more ideas for political reform, such as the Independence Gate and the Independence Club, while also suggesting the creation of a national congress. As his work slowed on, Seo jae began to make criticism and was eventually fired from the King's Council. In May of 1898, Seo jae and his family returned to America. Seo jae remained in America for 50 years. Throughout those years, Japan took rule over Korea and many people died fighting for independence. In 1919, the March 1st independence movement began. Hearing this news, Seo jae sold his clinic and businesses and used the money to publish newspapers about the movement. He also raised funds in order to help the people in his motherland, sacrificing his own well-being for the good of his country. On August 15, 1945, Korea became free from Japanese rule. Two years later, Seo jae returned to Korea. He traveled throughout the country, giving speeches and even talking on radio. His topics were always on the subject of democracy. Finally, on August 15, 1948, the Korean government was established. It was Korea's rebirth as a democratic country. After the creation of the new government, Seo jae returned to America for a third time. On January 5, 1951, he passed away at the age of 86 in Morristown Montgomery Hospital. Doctor, journalist, scholar, educator, founder, diplomat, architect, politician, activist. These are all the identities of Seo jae However, if there was only one title that he could identify himself with, it would be the idealist who helped to enlighten the public, a Democrat. He said, I am just a simple man. I have lived with only one mission in life, democracy. I love my motherland and my family, that is all. Although he was exiled and even deported from his own country, getting humiliated and encountering hardships at numerous times, Seo jae remained dedicated to his motherland. Today, we, the people of Korea, are living in his dream. <laughs>